Can you tell me how the script came about? How the idea for the script came about that is? Okay, so the desert point, yes. Um, a couple of years ago, I was in Sydney, in Australia, working on uh, another production, yep. and came across this remarkable book, which had a remarkable story about the fact that amongst the first fleet uh, in the late 18th century, the convicts who were to populate uh, Australia, the Europeans who were to populate Australia, amongst these convicts were two, uh, at least two um, uh, black people. And uh, um, uh, they'd been slightly sort of airbrushed out of history in Australia, which is, given Australia's attitude to race, is mm. not entirely surprising. Uh, but um, it set me thinking uh, about a possible story. And this story was about a, a man uh, who came from uh, uh, Africa, who was captured by slave traders, taken across to America, where he was forced to work on a plantation, and then who escaped uh, to join the British Army, because this was the time of the War of Independence, and, um, who, uh, and the British Army were offering uh, for those escaped mm. slaves who joined them uh, to act as spies and um, fight on the front line and so on. Uh, but of course then what the British did was lost the war. Uh, they lost the war and so um, our, our hero ends up a free man, yes, but now on a ship back to England, all the time wanting to get back to Mali in this case, yep. uh, where he comes from. Uh, he gets back to England, but of course he's penniless. He's, uh, he, he has no, no, no possibility of a job. My very brief prose story was set in the 18th century and I was interesting, but frankly no more than that. Uh, I gave it to Montesola and she has turned it into this rather wonderful contemporary story about a young man um, called Soldier Boy uh, who to all appearances is a typical South East London hoodie living now, 2010. And at the beginning of the play, we uh, find him uh, on, a, on a place called, this, known as Deptford Beach, um, which for anybody who knows Deptford, the idea of there being a beach there is, is, is quite horrendous. But there is indeed a beach there, where it's a strip of muddy, grungy sand, um, where the Ravensbrook meets the Thames. He finds himself on Deptford Beach with a knife sticking out of his stomach and he's bleeding profusely, he's bleeding dangerously. And in the delirium of his injury, he sees uh, this figure emerge out of the muddy, grungy sand. And this figure is of a character who we'll know as Desert Man. So, in a way, Desert Boy is a story about two young men, both of whom have been denied for completely different reasons and in completely different ways. Both of them have been denied their right of passage, rights of passage into manhood. It sounds like it's obviously a play more geared towards uh, perhaps a younger audience. How would you say it's particularly relevant to that, to, the, to, that young, to that young audience? What are the kind of main areas that you'll be looking at, that you'll be trying to take from the script and show to the public? Um, well, I suppose I'm, I'm, I'm always wary of messages and, and meanings. Um, I think you know every member, of, each member of an audience, will take away from a, any show or play their own understanding of it. But um, clearly, it's it's about people making decisions in their lives. Um, People under terrible circumstances. You know, we have one guy who's un 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 you know, he's a slave. Um, we have uh, a soldier boy who, 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 as I said, his family background is is, com is is completely sort of broken up. But they still make decisions which affect them and other people. And those decisions can be made responsibly or irresponsibly. And those decisions have consequences. So I suppose um, there is, if you like, there is a sort of a message there, if you like. 
the bigger picture, however, is is one of is one of um, this notion of uh, of the rite of passage into manhood. It's about growing up. And as director uh, of this a cappella musical, what can you tell us a little bit more about your particular role? What what you do from like day to day, and how you'll move from week one to, to week five and to the actual premiere of the show. Right. Um, okay, so Nitro is a new writing company. That means that the director's role is quite different from the director's role uh, in a production where the play is an old play, you know, where the play is already known, finished, completed, tidy, uh, published, possibly already successful, who knows. But we also worked very closely with Philip Osmond, uh, who is a, a notable dramaturg. Uh, the dramaturg's role in this is to be a sort of sounding board for the writer, to help the writer, to be a mentor, perhaps, for the writer. Uh, and often, um, the writer's relationship, wh whilst the play is being written, should be primarily with the dramaturg. And then the writer's relationship during the production, during rehearsal, is primarily with the director. And the dramaturg's skill is to pull the best play that exists on the page out of the writer. Um, and so the role of the director is to, uh, during the writing process, is to uh, keep abreast of the development, to um, assist the the dramaturg and the writer, wherever possible, in the development of the play, get, then get to, um, at various periods in the writing process, we have what we call work workshops. So a workshop is, can be about many things. It might be about receiving a first draft from a play and wanting simply to hear it being read. Um, it might be, in this case, uh, the first workshop we had, was about the style and form. Because it's an a cappella musical, because I wanted to be a very much an ensemble piece, I wanted to explore how that might turn out. So we didn't spend that much time on the script in our first workshop. We spent more time on taking just two or three short scenes and seeing how we might develop them as performers. So I brought in five actors and they worked on that. We had a second workshop here, uh, process which was simply, in effect, really just a play read. And that was, uh, that was held here, uh, and, and we analyzed the text and took it through. Now we're in rehearsals, so in between that second workshop and the rehearsals, uh, as the director, I've had to cast it. Uh, I've had to choose the rest of my creative team. In this case, it's a, a designer, it's a musical director, it's a lighting designer, I like all the parts. I like all the parts. I mean, um, sitting in a rehearsal room, working in a rehearsal room is, is fantastic. But I, I'm, I'm a composer and a playwright as well. I, I enjoy sitting uh, at my desk with a you know, blank manuscript paper or a blank sheet of paper and writing a play. Um, I enjoy all the aspects of this, my own business. Uh, but a rehe yeah, it, it, rehearsing with actors and rehearsing with intelligent actors who give back something. And for budding young, for budding young directors, uh, budding young directors, what would you say are some of the most important things to remember if you're trying to forge your career as a director? Go and see loads and loads of different productions by loads and loads of different directors. Really have an understanding of all the possibilities of theatre. Really understand that it can be a straight talking heads type piece of work where the text is absolutely everything, right through to a piece of circus-based work where there are hardly any words. It can be a piece for a, a star where everybody else is, is minimal. It can be a total ensemble piece. It can be a musical, it can be a musical theatre, it can be all sorts of things. Um, and, and, and go and see opera. Go and see all these types of things because you'll begin to understand what the possibilities are of putting a piece of work on stage.